what a great gospel to end the year on. It's, it's a, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God. It's like, it's like a quick summary of everything. So in the beginning, right, everything that was created was created by God. Everything that was created was created out of love, just this self-effacing, self-emptying love of God that creates everything out of love for us. And then we fast forward to John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus so that all can be brought back to him. All that can be brought back to the Father. You know, it's everything exists, everything comes from the Father in order to return back to the Father. This year, 2020, um, it's been very different. I'm not that old, but it's probably the most unique year of my life so far. Uh, and I think many people would summarize this year with one word, which is COVID, uh, or Corona-19, as some call it, um, the coronavirus. Many would summarize this year that this is what it'll be remembered for, uh, because it had such wide-ranging uh, effects on, on different people's lives, from students, teachers, parents, crashes, factories, uh, travel, so much was affected by it. And so much would, I think many would argue, so much was, was harmed by it, so much maybe fear, uh, so much loneliness, especially Christmas has been uh, quite a strange one with families not gathering as, as they typically did. And so it becomes, I think, easy to look back on this year and say, what a waste, what a mess, what a disaster. And it got me thinking, I, I saw uh, an interview uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, with nurses in the NHS, I don't know where exactly they were from, but they're English, and they were asked the question, patients that you've lost, what were their last words? What were the last things they said? And when I, I, I was watching this, I was expecting what would you expect? Like, what would you expect would be people's last words before they, they die? I would imagine, I imagined that people would have said, I should have spent more time with the family, or uh, I shouldn't have been so career-oriented, or I should have retired earlier, or I should have made more time to do what I love doing. But I was actually startled by the nurses' answers. Because most of them, what, what, what the nurses actually recounted was so incredibly ordinary, right? Um, one lady said, yeah, but there's, uh, I've, yeah, I've lost people but, uh, under my care. And um, I remember one of them, he knew he was going, and he said, look, nurse, is there any chance I could have a cup of tea? And I, I was watching this video, and I was actually, I was actually shocked. I'll, I'll get to why I was shocked in a minute. And then another lady said, oh, Nurse, would it be okay if my dog came into the ward and we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do? <laughs> like, uh, and then, you know, someone else said, you know, they just wanted their, their favourite programme. I haven't seen Carnation Street in a while. And what really struck me and kind of shocked me, if I'm honest, is that we tend to kind of finish our lives as we've lived our lives. You know, we finish our lives, we end our lives as we've lived them. I, I would have expected at the end of, of your life, you know, when you're looking back on your life, like look at the end of this, you know, we're 31st of uh, December, now we're looking back on this year. But if you kind of fast forward in a couple of years, when we're going to be looking back on our whole lives. Uh, I would have imagined that people would have had a kind of a, a more global, universal kind of uh, in theology, they might call it eschatological, so like in the perspective of eternal life. You're looking at your life as you've lived it in the perspective of where am I going now? But I was actually startled by the fact that most people looked at their lives just like they looked at every other day. You know, I'll just have a cup of tea. If my dog could come, that'd be great. Could you just put on Coronation Street? The, 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 there wasn't this, this really profound review of their lives and what they could have and should have done better. And it was kind of scary because it means that there aren't necessarily these last minute conversions like we would hope. You know, you'd hope that in the last minute, like people might, might just choose God, you know, that they've, they've lived without him, but then in the end they might see their need for him and come back. My goodness, maybe, maybe, maybe they won't. Maybe at the end of their lives, they'll, oh bless, I haven't seen a football match in ages, nurse. Any chance I could watch Liverpool versus Man United? And, and then they die. And that was it. Do you know, that was, 
that was that was how they chose to end their lives. That was the, the last action they chose, should I say it might be better. That was the last action that, that they chose to do before they died. Not this great big review and, and asking for forgiveness and reconciling with those they'd fallen out with and that, but they, they ended their lives as they had lived their lives. And as I say, I just, I just found, that, I found that quite shocking, I, uh, also like for, for, for myself. Um, we live our lives a certain way and then the time comes when, when we're going to go. That's it. You know, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. The Lord has planned everything. The Lord has a plan for everyone. But whether I fulfill that plan or not, that's, that's up to me. That's my choice. So as we review this year, we might look back and say, bless, it was, it was, it was such, a, such a mess, such a disaster. Uh, but I remember talking to a friend of mine, and he's a father, proud father of two. And I'm godfather to one of them. And uh, he said, you know, he said, don't tell anyone, like, but this was a great year. <laughs> and I said, oh, I won't tell anyone. Why, 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 why was it a great year? And he said, normally, I'd spend an hour and a half commuting to work, and an hour and a half commuting home. Now I'm working from home, I have three extra hours in my day. My, my day is now three hours longer. Rather than sitting in the car, listening to Rosetta Stone trying to learn Hebrew, uh, or French, uh, or just listening to the news, whatever, I actually have three extra hours a day to spend with my family. So I said I was out teaching my son, how to play a bit of hurling. I went for little cycle laps around our block with my little daughter, and I actually have, I'm not stressed. I have, I have time for the family. Now, obviously, having more time for the family, as we've seen also, unfortunately, can go both ways. They can drive you crazy, uh, or it, it can actually put a lot of strain on, on some marriages and some families. Um, so it's not, but what I'm saying is, when we review the year, often, depending on how we use the circumstances, there can be great blessings in it. I know for ourselves here in Holy Family, uh, we've had obviously much less missionary outreach because we couldn't go places and we've had very, very, very few retreats coming to us because it wasn't legal. But the Lord then chose to use uh, a live stream camera to broaden our mission to more people than would ever fit in our little chapel here. So for, for us in Holy Family, it's actually been, it's, it's been a year of great blessing. It really, really has. Um, it means now also that we have more time just to, to dedicate to the young people who come here to, to live with us, to be formed in this, this year of discipleship with the Lord. I know I'm, there's often stories I can't tell, but uh, different families who have benefited greatly from, from being together. And it, it kind of, it leads to, at times, a lot of difficult truths being brought to the surface. Okay, so now these are very clear issues in our marriage that need resolving. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We can pretend they're not there. We can hide them with distraction. Or we can try to fix our marriage. Again, I think if you look back on the year, it, the problem isn't so much whether or not there was a virus, but what we do with these opportunities, what we do with them how we use the circumstances around us. So it's been, it's been a very, very odd year. Uh, very kind of an un like trying to plan anything here is just jeepers. Like kind of, everything's built on sand and everything is kind of shifting and moving around. And you're trying to, what, what do we do next month? I have no idea what we're doing tomorrow, love. So, but, but even in that, like, all of these circumstances can be used for the good, all things. Well, can we turn to the good for those who love the Lord? So looking back on the year, I think it's so important to look back and count our blessings. It's so important to recognize the Lord's hand, even in the difficult circumstances, and to count our blessings. To not just write this year off, you know, as, as it's very easy to do, but I don't think, it's, I don't think it just does justice to the fact that this year afforded us opportunities, opportunities to grow in grace, opportunities to grow in virtue, opportunities to grow in our relationship with the Lord. And if we look back and, and see how, how well we use those opportunities, 
that would be a great blessing to look back and say, yeah, it was, I mean, it was rough. It was rough, no doubt about it. It was unpredictable. But I think I prayed better, or I think I prayed more, or I think our family is stronger. Or maybe I look back and I go, maybe I didn't use this year as I could have or should have. Well, thankfully, in that case, COVID isn't gone yet, so you have another couple of months. So with all this lockdown, we have this opportunity to, to continue or try again. I've got, you've got maybe more time at home, more time in your religious community, whatever, whatever it is. Use it. Because the danger is that we might come to the end of our lives and, and at the end of our life, just do what we've always done and miss it. Miss the opportunities. Miss the opportunities for conversion. Miss the opportunities for repentance. And maybe miss heaven. And that would be the greatest tragedy. So we ask the good Lord at the end of this year, as we look back on 2020 with all of its ebbs and flows and blessings and difficulties. We ask him to help us to see the opportunities that he gave us, the opportunities we had to grow, to deepen, to be pruned. And if we've used those opportunities, thank God, we, we thank God for, for every way that he has worked in our lives. And if we, in hindsight, think that we could have done better, well, you've got a whole year to try it again. Let no opportunity pass to draw some blessing or some grace out of it. St. Paul knew how to rejoice in abundance and how to pray fervently in need. Whatever comes our way, good, bad, or indifferent, let it all unite us to our Lord. The fulfillment of our every desire. Amen.